Good evening. Welcome back to the Olympic Zone. Another big night, big day ahead as it's now 930 in the morning in Pyeongchang. U.S. women's hockey team looking for payback tonight. Yeah, even as the Americans are, uh, the skaters are on thin ice, so to speak. Uh, yes. <laughs> hey, look who's here. It's Meryl yes. Davis. Hi. Hi I'm, back. <laughs> I'm doing the Meryl Davis wave is the new thing. I do that. There you go. Well, before we get to you, we're going to do a rundown of some of the big stories of the day at the games. Uh, tonight's big showdown, U.S. women's hockey, USA against Canada, rematch of the final in Sochi, where Canada beat the U.S. in overtime. Canada loves the gold. They're going for their fifth in a row. Canada has already beaten the U.S. this year in a preliminary game, but the American players feel it might be a different ending. Well, when I was younger, I would always visualize and, and picture myself winning a gold medal and, and standing on that podium or the blue line with my teammates and singing the national anthem. So um, that's always been in the back of my mind and I'm sure all of my teammates' minds. <laughs> well, unfortunately for the men, their quest for a medal is over. They lost to the Czech Republic in the quarterfinals. It came down to a shootout and Bobby Butler there couldn't find the back of the net. No medal for the men's team. I hated to see that come down to a shootout either way. Uh, West Bloomfield's Kyle Mack has made the finals of the Big Air snowboard, snowboard event, qualified along with fellow Americans Chris Corning and Red Girard. Of course, Red Girard already won the first gold medal for America in slope style. A great surprise. A 17 year old came out of nowhere to do that. The finals on Big Air will be held on Friday. And Lindsey Vaughn's comeback bid ended with a bronze medal in the downhill. She was hoping for gold. At 33 years old, she's the oldest woman to ever win an Alpine medal at the Winter Games. She's won three medals since 2010. Vaughn is struggling with the fact this is most likely her last Olympics. I gave it my best shot, you know. I, I tried so hard and I worked my butt off. Um, it's been fun. It's been a fun ride and I hope tomorrow I can maybe pull something out of the hat, but um, it's sad. This is my last downhill. I wish I could keep going, you know. Aww. We all do. Uh, yeah. Probably the best uh, woman's alpine skier totally. of sure. all time. Sure. Uh, and Meryl, you've been through that knowing that this is the last one, that final skate. It's tough, isn't it? That's right. Um, in Sochi, Charlie and I hadn't decided for sure whether or not we would retire from competition. And I think that was a really good thing for us because when you go out to perform or compete knowing this is the last time, I think it adds an extra layer of pressure yeah. um, to make it that much more special. Yeah. But, you know, moving on from being a career athlete or a lifetime athlete is incredibly tough. Um, in the world of Olympians, we have something called the post-Olympic blues. You know, you're on this, this high and you're, sure. you're doing this thing, this amazing thing yeah. that you've worked for your whole life and um, people are supporting you and so excited for you and then you go home and it's sort of like, okay, this is normal life and it's, it's a little bit different. And so I think, you know, whether you're just coming home from the Olympics or moving on from Olympic sport or competing in the games, I think you sort of have to mourn a part of your identity. You know, you start to see yourself and understand yourself as a person really being identified as this sport or this commitment yeah. that you've made. Uh, and I think it can be very challenging to me. In fact, you're working on a story for a newscast on that, what, what happens blues after the game. I am, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Blues. Yeah, yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah, coming up, yeah. Any high hopes for the women's uh, American figure skating they quickly dashed during a heartbreaking night on the ice? Each woman stumbling there. It just hurts to even look at it. Um, I mean, what do you think about that? It just, it just it's hard to look at. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I mean, I think that a, a podium finish would be very challenging for any of the ladies at this point, yeah. and I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we talked about Nathan Chen, and he was America's best hope for gold in the figure skating, and he turned this difficult situation into something beautiful, but for someone like Nathan, who was a potentially gold medal favorite, to come away from the games um, without a medal is incredibly disappointing. Um, none of these ladies were necessarily a medal at the games or bust kind of situation. Right. Yeah, that's right. true. Um, and so, you know, they're representing themselves very well. Of course, Mariah wanted to nail that triple axel, what you see here uh, in the program. She nailed it in the team event. Um, Which helping was a historic historic event the for first American time. skating, right? That's right, the first time ever for an American lady. Um, she helped the U.S. figure skating team to win a bronze uh, in that team event. And of course, this is a disappointment. Um, Mariah 
uh, was and is an outside chance for a medal in the individual event anyway. Um, this is Brady Tunnell. This was actually, she's our reigning U.S. figure skating champion. Mm -hmm. um, this was actually her first fall in competition all season. Yeah. Um, a little bit of a shock, I'm sure, for her, a shock for the figure skating community. But you know what? She, as we've addressed before, people consider her sort of like coming out of nowhere to mm -hmm. win the U.S. championship. Karen Chen, we see here. These are tremendous ladies with a lot of talent, um, but their time isn't over. You know, right. this yeah. wasn't their right. one shot. Um, and I think to be Olympians, to represent themselves well on and off the ice, is incredibly important for them here, not just as people, but as they move forward in their competitive careers as and well. And my question is, are they still young enough uh, to be competitive and to be at the top of this game? And what do they have to do in order to compete with the Russians who always seem to be meddling? Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, gold medal and silver medal. <laughs> yes. Oh, they're meddling already. They're, yes. <laughs> but um, it, it's a complicated question because the sport is Changing, changing dramatically mm -hmm. from one season to the next, um, from one Olympic cycle to the next. What is expected? What is required to be competitive? Um, you know, you look at the men doing up to six quads in one yes. program now. The ladies are doing triple axles. Um, and so I, I think that what one needs to do to keep up is um, it's sort of changing as we go. But I, to answer your first question, I don't think any of them is too old. Cool. Um, mm -hmm. Carolina Costner of Italy, who's sitting, I believe, in fourth place right now, um, is 31 years old. Oh, and yeah. so, mm -hmm. you know, as in many sports, we're sort of making things up as we go and figuring <laughs> out what's possible. And I think that's what makes the Olympic Games so exciting is yeah. Yeah. you're pushing the limits of human capability. I already start, already start pointing their minds then toward 2022, which will be in, uh, in Beijing. Yeah. And, and it's striking when you see the, we saw the video of Peggy Fleming yeah. to where we are today. Wow. Yeah. The whole, I mean, it's not even the same sport, really. In fact, speaking of the pioneers, I just found this out. This is a great fact. I was asking Meryl why there aren't more great Scandinavian skaters like Sonia Henney, who from Sweden way back in the day, and you said... She is my great, great, I believe great aunt. No way. A, cu a, couple, a couple times removed. So she's, yeah, one of the most famous figure skaters of all time. That's phenomenal. She was the second wife of my... Great, great, great uncle. Of course she was. In the water. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. doubt about water, it. Right. That's really great. Yeah. Meryl, thanks as always yeah, for being here thanks. with us. Thank we'll see what happens. Thank you. Yep. See what happens tonight. Yes. All right, uh, we'll still ahead. Being a star athlete is a family tradition. Another family tradition here for this father and daughter. The lessons this dad is passing along could have a golden payoff. We'll talk about that next. Stars shining bright above you. The Gig Speed Network that powers the dreams of America's businesses is now doing the same for America's Olympic and Paralympic athletes. Dream Gig, Comcast Business. The Olympic Zone, brought to you by Comcast Business, built for business. Welcome back, everybody. The team of Elena Myers-Taylor and Lauren Gibbs captured the silver medal this morning in the two-woman bobsled. They missed the gold by seven one-hundredths of a second. Think about that for a second. Uh, Myers Taylor also piloted Team USA to silver in Sochi and is already talking about going for that elusive gold medal in 2022. If she does return, her training partner might have a lot to do with it. NBC's Mike Tirico talks to Myers Taylor about her very special secret weapon. All right, I'll race you. In a basement just outside of Atlanta, Georgia, I'll count. Eddie Myers and his daughter, Alana Myers Taylor, are pushing each other. It's been this way for more than 10 years. Training with my dad is really a lot of fun because he's always challenged me to try and push my limits. From her father, Myers Taylor inherited her raw athletic power and an appreciation for hard work. Myers was an All-American running back at the Naval Academy. He likely would have been a first round pick in the 1981 NFL draft, but was ineligible due to his six year commitment with the Navy. I think the driving factor at the end of the day that give it time and it's gonna happen and you'll play and you'll do well. 
After his six years in the Navy, Myers made the Falcons' preseason roster and then suffered a career-ending injury. He never played in an NFL game. He's always told me that your career as an athlete is very short, so you have to take the moment and enjoy it. Four years ago at the Olympics, Myers Taylor felt her moment slip away. Whoa! Alana Myers needs to get this under control. I ended up losing the gold medal by a tenth of a second. It was very hard and very devastating for me. But she kept pushing. Three years ago, Myers Taylor became the first American woman to win a world title. Uh, no, I'm, not, I'm not even close. She's better than I was. I always wanted to be like my father. My father has greatly impacted my journey because he's a hardworking, determined man and because of the qualities that he instilled in himself, he's passed that on to me. Wow, what a great story. Yeah. And he was at the Naval Academy, huh? Well, meanwhile, the United States won its first Olympic gold in women's cross-country skiing in what's being called a major upset. Keegan Randall and her teammate Jessica Diggins won the team sprint in a race that went down to the wire. It's Sweden and the United States, stride for stride, push for push. Who's it going to be? Nilsson or Diggins coming down to the line. And the United States has done it. They did. Now watch the replay of it. And this is how close it was. Boom, your winner. Look at that. I don't wow. Inches. They're the first American women to capture cross-country gold. And the United States had gone 42 years without any medal in this event. That's huge. Pretty That's good. Amazing. But yeah. these these time margins you're seeing where it's a, a whole bunch of people bunched in within the tenths of a second tells you how close to the state of the art everybody is no in the question. world. Really yeah. something. Uh, by the way, Keegan Randall, the only mom on the uh, Olympic team to win a medal yeah, and yeah. still ahead. We'll talk about the parents of Olympians. We're going to profile a hockey family with not one but two daughters going for the gold tonight. What it takes to raise world-class athletes when the ozone continues. Yep. If you're the parent of an athlete, you can imagine the Olympics would be just so nerve-wracking for an athlete's parents, maybe more so than for the athletes themselves. We've seen families in tears, uh, shouting encouragement, consoling, celebrating. Dylan Dreyer introduces us to a hockey family from North Dakota with not one, but two daughters going for gold. The Lamaru twins are veterans playing on their third Olympic team. Each time, their parents were there. Our mom has just always been so supportive and bubbly and a cheerleader, and her dad's kind of just always been our coach. She kind of just made a perfect pair, I guess. And those roles were on full display get it, get it. against Finland. Get in there, pressure. get in there, let's go. Go, Vinny! Slamaru on a chance, a shot, they score! Ah! Since they were four, the sisters, both forwards, have always played together. They have what they call an undeniable chemistry. Lamaru with a shot, he scores! And at the end of each game, the twins look for their biggest fans. They're such a huge part of our success and our journey, and we wouldn't be here without them. At the game against arch rival Canada, the Lamaroos were anxious. We gotta hit those windows quicker. Oh, I'm not looking. Canada wins it two to one. In Monday's semifinal, nervous energy had Pierre standing watch while Linda was on the edge of her seat. The United States will play for the gold medal. Their trip to the final assured tears of joy, a reunion. Whether or not the twins take the gold, Pierre Lamoureux knows the girls will remember a story he told them often. You know, the face on the mirror. You can look at yourself in the face, say, I did the best I could, and walk to the head. And the U.S. women's hockey team going for gold tonight. We had a real hockey game breakout at the end of their last skirmish <laughs> <laughs> tonight against Canada, and that game will be live on NBCSN, the sports network. All right, still ahead, more Korean cooking. Mm. Sun is firing off one-liners and shrimp tempura <laughs> that are delish. Stick around. 
Hello, everyone. Mike Tirico back at the International Broadcast Center. Coming up tonight on NBC, it's a big day on the slopes with Lindsey Vaughn and Michaela Schifrin back in action, head-to-head -head in the women's super combined. In the men's slalom, Austria's Marcel Hirscher looks to add to the two gold medals he's already won at these games. In freestyle skiing, it's the men's halfpipe final with four Americans in it, including the defending gold medalist David Wise. Cross-country skiing features the team sprint Plus, the final runs of women's bobsled with two American sleds in the medal hunt. All that more coming up tonight on NBC. We've said it before, but I'll say it again. Kudos to our buddy Mike Tirico. He's yeah, just doing, a great doing terrific work there. Uh, last night, we learned about Korean blood sausage. Bernie's still <laughs> recovering from that. But what are we cooking? A little more mainstream tonight? Yes, I would say a little bit more mainstream. Uh, you know, everybody's wondering, well, what, what part did you do in all this? And I, I can boil water if you need coffee, <laughs> okay. as long as there's a Keurig nearby. But for tonight, no Keurig needed, just a love of shrimp tempura. <laughs> Welcome back. We've been learning about this beautiful Korean meal and all the the uh, traditions like my slippers are on i need something like an 11 but they tell me that <laughs> korean folks don't have big feet he's too big right oh well, yeah i'm a giant but anyway this looks amazing to me this is shrimp tempura and those shrimp yes. are gigantic yes this is a korean oxymoron jumbo shrimp jumbo shrimp so how do you prepare this well Open the packages. <laughs> <laughs> you buy the shrimp. Yeah. Buy the well, shrimp. Well, you think I went the ocean and <laughs> caught it? No, I don't think you went in the ocean and caught it. No, but that's good. It's <laughs> that's good. Rolled, Go ahead. Rolled in an egg wash. Yeah. Uh huh. Then rolled in the tempura. Let me hear more from her because she's causing a lot of problems. <laughs> Go ahead, roll in a tempura. Here's the fisher Let's see a big shot. Pick oh. this up. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, boy, I get hungry. Well, first, it's wet. If you fry it, when uh -huh. they're wet, it's going to be all over, like no. a bomb. Right. From the oil. Right. So you got to dip bomb. it with dip the it flour. In. Flour. Then uh, flash fry it. A, a, Second, pour in the egg. Uh huh. You marinate it, then a uh, burnt crumb. And where do you get the sticks? Did you go to get it? Did you chop down a tree and make the sticks? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no. I went. To, I went to. Yeah, I'm also. How did you know? Because I, I saw you up in the tree. That's how. Oh, Here we go. We're You're worse than too. me. No, I'm worse than everyone. Oh my God. Oh boy. Fabulous. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. If you can take off. all the trouble, it's worth it. She'll be appearing at Mark Ridley's in she, Royal Oak this She needs week. her own YouTube channel, <laughs> yeah. if nothing else. And yeah. by the way, the recipe is on Click on Detroit. Oh, excellent. Yeah. And you, you clearly enjoyed that one. Oh, I would say. Much even better. the stick was good. <laughs> <laughs> better than the blood sauce. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> All right, still ahead, what's in a name? I will share something I learned to my trip to the Olympic City when we come right back with the Ozone. Time to check the temperature for the Pyeongchang area. The current temperature in Pyeongchang is brought to you by the Nest Learning Thermostat. Because everyone likes easy. Sure do. Because everyone is on the go. Because we all like to save energy, but sometimes we slip up. Reaching up. Because sometimes we want it cool at night, then toasty in the mornings. Introducing the easy to use, energy saving, adjustable from everywhere, easy on the wallet and the eyes, Nest Thermostat E. E is for everyone. Now, especially for Westerners, it's easy to confuse Pyeongchang, the Olympic city, with Pyongyang, the capital of North Korea folks here would prefer that you keep those straight. Such is the power of the Olympic moment. City leaders decided to change the spelling of this town from lowercase c to capital C, Pyeongchang, almost as if to emphasize that this is Pyeongchang and not, you know. Is that wild as part of their, when they were getting ready to try and make their Olympic bid years, they just decided to change so the spelling. So why do we say Pyeongchang? That is a question I'm still <laughs> trying to get to the bottom of. For a while, it looked, it seemed clear that NBC was going to go with Pyeongchang, what? and that's certainly the way that I learned to pronounce it while I was there. And now 
Everybody in the broadcast is saying, Chang, I'm waiting for Mr. Tirico to get back to explain what's happened. Wow. Lester Holt on the first night said Pyong Chang, and everybody, everybody, everybody flipped, followed him. Flipped right out. It did right. seem that way. Absolutely. Didn't? Yeah. It's Lester's fault. I, under, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll keep figuring that out. That we will. The Olympic Zone returns tomorrow at 7 30, and we're back tonight at 11 with Local 4 News and Weather. Right now, grab your Olympic snacks. Maybe some tempura shrimp, mm. your favorite chair, and settle in. Live coverage now from South Korea.